Hey, 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 Nikki Brown here. No matter where you are and what part of the world you are in, I hope that you are having a good day. So I'm just thinking of um, life in general, right? And I have conditioner in my hair in case you're wondering. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay. I'm okay with being on camera without being all dolled up and made up and all, you know, the things. And so I guess that's one of the things that I want to talk about confidence, right? Or the lack of. And a few months back, somebody said to me in regard to my YouTube channels, oh, you made that look easy, but I realize it's not easy. And I'm thinking in my mind, how does it look easy? When I see, and maybe it's because I studied film, video, and audio production in college. Because once upon a time, that was my major. Um, because I always wanted to be an actress, right? And then I figured since... Um, acting didn't work out for me. I could still be in the industry in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So I decided to study media arts. I changed my major a lot. My very first major was psychology. Then I changed it to criminal justice. Then I stopped going to school <laughs> for years. Then I finally went back. I took a computer repair course, learned how to take a computer apart and put it back together. Um, that was just like a certificate. And that was actually through um, my employer at that time. Then I went back to college. Um, and I know media arts was my major. And then I think I stopped going again. No, I moved to North Carolina. So once I moved to North Carolina, then I started going back again. And once upon a time, I was I, my major was nursing. Then I went back into theater. Um, it was dance. <laughs> well, no, for theater, you have to take a certain amount of dance classes. Um, English is what I end up with a degree in. Anyway, I changed my major several times. But anyway, once upon a time, it was media arts. And so I took audio, film, and video production. And so I know all the editing that has to go into making a YouTube video. So when I see some of these YouTube videos, I don't think that it's easy at all. I think, wow, they spend a lot of time editing. <laughs> um, and that was one of the things that was the most challenging, especially in audio production where we were using reel to reels and you had to splice, which is basically cut a section out and then tape it back together where you want one sound to end and the other sound to begin. Um, we also learned on a Mac, um, and I do have the editing software. I have um, iMovie and uh, Final Cut Pro. And I know that I can do it and I have done it. Um, I'm not going to say I used all of the options that are available because I'm going to be totally honest. I find editing to be very challenging. I feel like I'm more of a reading and writing kind of girl and not so much a technical, not into technical details like that. Um, sometimes I get a little frustrated with the editing. Again, I do it. You know, and iMovie is like the basic and then Final Cut Pro is like the more professional. And I still don't know what I'm doing. 
I'm going to be just totally honest. That is something that is challenging for me. And I would love to get to the point where I can pay somebody to edit for me. And I just sit there and, you know, say, okay, put this here, put that there. Um, but I see a lot of people who are on YouTube, they don't edit at all. They just straight record the video and they play it and, you know, or they record it and they upload it and they're done with it. They don't have, you know, some of the fancy intros and outros and music and um, all the things that some of the more um, detail oriented, I will say, YouTubers have where they have like an intro video again with, you know, them and different images and they have the words up there and they have, you know, different poses or different pictures popping in and out, you know, over their music or even different videos playing that they've edited. And that editing can take hours, if not days to complete. Um, and so when I heard her say that, oh, you make it look easy. And again, in my mind, I'm thinking, how? That doesn't make sense to me. But I know that I've always been the type of person where other people see me as confident in a way that I don't even feel within myself. Just like when somebody says that I'm skinny, I used to get an attitude because I don't consider myself to be skinny. And one of the reasons why is because when I was heavier, um, I would have a certain family member poke me in my stomach and say, oh, I never had a stomach that big when I was your age. And this person, I realized, never had anything good to say. There was never a, oh, I'm proud of you. You're doing a good job. Every time this person would see me, there was some type of criticism. Oh, why you got those big old bags under your eyes? I'm just so concerned. And I realized after years and years and years, this person never says anything good. It's always a criticism. And then um, I had an ex who, you know, when we first started dating, I was one size and maybe I gained, you know, five or 10 pounds and I gained weight in my upper body first and more specifically in my belly area. And he did something similar, poke me in my stomach and say, you're getting fat. And so, although I've lost weight since then and pretty much kept it off, although I still kind of go up and down a little bit, um, when I look in the mirror, I still see that heavier version of myself. And so when people say things like you're skinny or you get on my nerves and all, and I'm like, what are you talking about? It really is, is terrible because again, body dysmorphic disorder is a real thing. I don't care. I've gotten into debates about this with my friends who are heavier or who have been heavy their whole life. And they say, oh, you don't know what that's like. That's bull. Don't tell me that I don't know what that's like. Because I know when I look in the mirror, I don't see what you see. I don't see this confident person. And for me, it's all like it's a facade. You know, um, you know, let me put this outfit on. Um, so that I can feel better about myself, not that I feel good about myself on the inside already. Now, over the years, I have been practicing self-love, um, and I've shared this before. I started saying, I love you in the mirror, and the first time I said it, a tear came down because I realized I didn't love myself as much as I thought I did, and I started doing that around 2015 or 16, maybe even 17, Somewhere around in there. Um, so let's say it's been at least five years that I've been practicing self-love. But it takes time to get there. And, um, you know, there are still some days where, you know, when 
the money isn't there to pay a certain bill or there's no food in the refrigerator or something gets turned off because I'm not able to take care of it. The confidence is not there. Um, or when I do gain weight, the confidence is not there. Um, or when I'm, you know, not making the income and my business is not doing well and I don't feel like I'm a success like I'd like to be. And success means something different to everybody, but just being able to live comfortably, being able to put food in the refrigerator and have all your bills paid, that's comfort, right? Um, just the little things. And people don't, again, don't seem to understand that, you know, especially attempting to be an, uh, especially wanting to be an entrepreneur, it's not easy. It's a struggle. So even if it's something as simple as a video, it's not easy. I don't care how it looks on Facebook. I remember one of my relatives said, oh, um, I asked her for 30 or $40 worth of food stamps because I had no food. And she said, what you need that for? You always taking all those pretty pictures. Where you was at? In the back of my apartment complex, near the woods, taking pictures. I couldn't believe it. And she didn't help me. She got hundreds of dollars. And not that she had to. That was not her obligation. But if somebody told me that they were hungry, I would help them. Even if I just had $10, I would give them three, five, something, a, ba a pack of noodles, a bag of beans, a bag of rice, $4, something, nothing. She didn't say, oh, well, I'll pick you up a couple of things from the store and mail it to you. Absolutely nothing. Because I asked, can, can I borrow your food stamp card? And I, you know, mail it to me and I'll mail it back to you. Nothing. She did not help me at all. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure she got a kick out of it. So then she could go back and gossip to my other relatives who have always had this jealousy because of, you know, I was treated like a doll. So because I was dressed up, but nobody thinks about the abuse that I went through, <laughs> you know, and people think I just had it so easy and I didn't. And it's a shame, again, that people will judge you based off something that's not even true or based off of things that they were told about you that were all lies because of what? Jealousy. So just because somebody makes something look easy doesn't mean it's easy for them. And that's all I wanted to say. I love y'all. Hope that was helpful. Later. Mwah.